Hi guys, it is a gray, gloomy, rainy day here. <coughs> Although no one's complaining around here, we need the rain here in this undisclosed swamp here on this drought plague planet. Here on this gloomy Saturday afternoon, February 6th, 2021. So, uh, my little dog and I, we barely made it back from our walk before the clouds opened up. And uh, so I can now do what I try to do pretty much every day. And this is today's Chronicle of the Collapse. And I want to thank uh, alert listener brother JJ from New York. I have touched on this story in uh, previous videos, but I guess JJ agrees with me that it needs a little more amplification and clarification. And this is from an outfit called Gizmodo. Gizmodo, from their climate change desk, the only carbon capture coal plant in the U.S. just closed. Imagine that. And uh, we're going to go over to the great state of Texas for this article. Then we're going to come back in a few minutes and uh, back to the sunshine state here in Florida and you can connect your own dots between these two stories. Early last year the Trump administration's Department of Energy celebrated a special birthday. Happy third operating anniversary Petra Nova the agency trumpeted in a press release. The release boasted of a coal-fired power plant in Texas that seemed to have done the impossible. It successfully removed carbon dioxide from the plant's emissions for three years, safely storing them. The celebration was early. <coughs> Petra Nova barely made it to its fourth birthday before being shuttered. Last week, NRG Energy, which owns the project, announced that it would, sh it would be shut down indefinitely in what may be one of the last gasps for carbon capture and storage technology in the U.S. And this, of course, is a wet blanket being thrown over uh, the techno utopians, uh, you, you know, the apocalyptimist and the little mainstream greenies like, you know, Joe Biden and AOC and uh, anyone believing uh, that we're just going to suck carbon dioxide right out of the air. Yep. On paper, carbon capture and storage, or CCS, sounds like the solution to all our problems. If we could just suck that carbon dioxide emitted by burning fossil fuels and put it somewhere else, we could cut warming without shifting away from old methods of generating energy. Which is the whole point, is, the, you know, it is letting uh, business as usual you just go right on uh, about business as usual. This is why oil companies, of course, are supporting this. Um, yes, in practice, though, the results have been less than promising and have failed to scale at anywhere near the levels needed to avert catastrophic climate change. Decades of research has made CCS technically feasible, but it is both incredibly complex and wildly expensive. Petra Nova was the only operational CCS project in the U.S and the largest one in the world using its specific technology. 
While other projects have attempted to get off the ground in the U.S., there have been some painfully high-profile failures, including one plant in Mississippi where costs ballooned more than 200 percent to seven and a half billion dollars without ever actually coming online. Nevertheless, the fossil fuel industry continues to chase after carbon capture. Just this week, ExxonMobil said that it was investing $3 billion over the next five years on projects to lower emissions, including 20 carbon capture projects around the world. So I wish that the... Uh, reporter and editors had uh, also, as a frame of reference, told how much ExxonMobil was pumping in, you know, into pumping out, how much money ExxonMobil was uh, putting towards getting more fossil fuels out of the ground over the next five years, I assure you, it would absolutely dwarf this hilarious uh, $3 billion over five years divided uh, by 20. Uh, guys, you know, this is a joke. This is Exxon Mobil greenwashing clueless little greeny morons. This is exactly what this is, and it's not just ExxonMobil, they're all doing it. Petronova looked at first to be a bright point for CCS before flaming out last week. This is Daniel Cohen, a professor of environmental engineering at Rice University, said, quote, what NRG always touted was that they were on time and on budget. The Trump administration flew in journalists from across Europe to show Petronova as an example of clean coal technology. It became the poster child of what carbon capture could do, close quote. But creating technology to remove emissions from burning coal did not come without a cost. In purporting to solve some fossil fuel problems, the project actually made some new problems. The CCS technology at Petronova required so much energy that NRG made an entirely separate natural gas power plant, the emissions of which were not offset by the Petronova technology just to power the scrubber. So the one scrubber in the coal-fired power plant required an entire new gas-powered plant to be built. And then, of course, as it says, uh, those numbers were not subtracted out of the bottom line. The presence of CCS technology, Cohen noted, also did not mean that the rest of the plant was totally clean. While CCS technology can help cut down on other pollutants like sulfur and nitrogen, the Petronova technology only affected one of four coal units at NRG's power plant. Those units were built in the 1980s and have minimal pollution controls, Cohen said, making the power plant, quote, one of the deadliest plants in Texas, close quote, in terms of asthma impacts on surrounding communities. And ironically, the carbon dioxide pulled from the plant's emissions was, as it is time and time again, actually used to make more fossil fuels. 
part of NRG's deal with the federal government, you know, meaning with the Trump administration, for running Petronova was gaining permission to transport the carbon dioxide scrubbed from burning coal to a separate oil field where it was injected underground to help release more oil. In a twist of fate, this oil was what ultimately killed Petronova after the crash in oil prices at the start of the corona panic last spring. NRG took the CCS project offline, stating that the price of the oil it could get with the extracted carbon dioxide was not worth the cost of actually doing the extracting. Prices have stayed low even as the economy recovered somewhat. Oil companies, large and small, have struggled to deal with the fallout from the corona panic, and the writing seemed to be on the wall before NRG's official announcement, announcement last week that it was simply too expensive to keep Petronova running. Yes, despite repeated technical problems and suspicions that NRG overestimated the amount of CO2 the project actually pulled from burning coal, Petronova did ultimately prove that you could get a CCS project of that size up and running. Cohen said Petronova's legacy could be important for certain industries where the use of fossil fuels is unavoidable or give some hope for big new coal plants with long lifespans being built overseas while also helping to mitigate the health impacts of those plants. But just because something can be done does not mean it should be done. Petronova was designed in 2014 when renewable energy cost a lot more in the U.S. than it does now. The plunging price of renewables over the past few years, Cohen said, means that using fossil fuels to power the grid makes increasingly less sense economically. Quote, right now, the cheapest way to make electricity is solar and wind. It no longer makes sense to keep an old coal plant running around, coal plant around to capture its carbon when you could far more affordably replace it with cleaner sources. Close quote. Now, I'm not going to go off on a separate video about, uh, about uh, Professor Cohen's own brand of hopium-soaked apocalyptimism. I'm not going to get in to all of the uh, all of the environmental cost of solar and wind. Uh, apparently, that man is bought into that bright green lie. I'll leave it leave it to Derek Jensen and Lierre Keith to explain that to you in their upcoming new book, Bright Green Lies. But uh, we're going to switch from uh, <clears throat> from the state of Texas right here to the Sunshine State uh, here today, uh, going over to the Miami Herald. And I just came from right where they're talking about this happening down in the Everglades, where we see <clears throat> Texas-based oil company applies to build well pads and roads in the Everglades. Wow, imagine this. A Texas-based oil company has applied for permits to build well pads and access roads in preparation for future oil drilling inside the Big Cypress National Preserve which provides habitat for endangered species such as the Florida panther, which 
is actually the Texas panther, ironically enough. There are no more Florida panthers, but anyway, uh, I, I just love the levels of irony in there. So guys, what this is, and uh, is, is just uh, more evidence of the absolute joke of protected areas. You know, when, when you hear about oil drilling inside, uh, I don't know, I think... Is the, is the Big Cypress National Preserve part of the national park system or not? I, I'm a little unclear, but it's, you know, it's one of these big nature preserves down there in South Florida where you might be led uh, to the ridiculous conclusion that oil drilling, that they're not going to be drilling for oil inside an obvious protected area like the Big Cypress National Preserve. And of course, you would be wrong. Burnett Oil Company, which already did seismic testing to look for oil in Big Cypress in 2017 and 2018, filed two applications to Florida's Department of Environmental Protection to fill in wetlands and build new infrastructure south of Interstate 75. The requests were filed late last month, just days, just days after the Trump administration gave the state of Florida permitting authority under the federal government's Section 404 of the Clean Water Act. And what this is talking about, what Trump did in the one of the many things he did in the final days that he had to do this, uh, he stripped federal oversight. So it was the federal government's uh, responsibility or duty or whatever. The federal government uh, you know, overseas filling in uh, endangered wetlands such as the Big Cypress Swamp and the Everglades. But Trump, you know, took advantage of this little loophole, you know, seeing that Biden uh, was going to win and, and there's no, and, and, and knowing that Biden uh, would never have let this happen, he found this loophole uh, that allowed him to move the regulation of oil drilling inside the Big Cypress National Preserve over to the state of Florida, which would be much more friendly, you know, his Republican buddies uh, over here in Florida. Uh, and this is all, it is not just this wetland, so now every wetland in the state of Florida, including the one that you can barely see through here, is now uh, being regulated by the state of Florida. So what is the company asking of the state of Florida since Joe Biden has nothing to say about it anymore? The company is asking the build new infrastructure in two new locations according to the permit applications. These applications refer only to dredging and filling wetlands for the well pads and access roads uh, and, and not for any actual drilling activity. Uh, the locations are near Raccoon Point where ExxonMobil discovered oil back in 1978. Um, conservations Group sent a letter to DEP Secretary Noah Valenstein and to the National Park Service this week opposing the company's request and complaining about the lack of transparency in the process. Um, and for those of uh, you uh, who are not aware of this, as most people aren't, that oil exploration in Big Cypress has 
in fact, been going on since the 1940s when the, you know, the protected area, when the preserve was created in 1974, the National Park Service, which manages, okay, the preserve, allowed the Collier family, <coughs> which owned part of the land, to continue to drill for oil in areas north of Alligator Alley and east of what is now the Florida Panther National Wildlife Refuge. A few years later, uh, oil was discovered and new wells were drilled. And so there has been a, a, um, a little bit of oil drilling, which you can see along Highway 29. Uh, yes, uh, this is this planted eater from Burnett based on existing production within the preserve and new seismic data, we are confident that our proposed wells will be economical and not merely exploratory. Yes, in the permit applications, Burnett provides a proposed timeline um, to begin building the site in December of this year, start drilling in June 2022, and begin production about 12 weeks after that. Production is estimated to last for 30 years or until the project goes underwater, at which point it will become an offshore oil pad when the Everglades go underwater. Yes. Uh, the company also said in its application that it is proposing to use directional drilling from a single well pad to minimize environmental impacts at the sites, but since the drilling would be happening horizontally underground, covering a large area, there is a risk to water resources under the preserve and beyond, uh, said a senior attorney from the Natural Resources Defense Council. Um, this is an area of porous lime, limestone and all the water in South Florida is connected, Kelly said. Uh, she added, it is unclear what the company would do to transport the oil for refining and how it would manage wastewater and other byproducts of oil drilling in such a sensitive ecosystem. Uh, anyway, this goes on and on. Uh, so the Corps of Engineers, you know, under Trump, uh, went out there and rubber stamped the project, concluding that there was, quote, no clear evidence of any residual adverse effects from Burnett's activities on the hydrology or biology of the Big Cypress, close quote. Uh, advocates said at the time it was suspicious that the agency, which earlier had said uh, the Big Cypress Swamp is no place for more oil drilling. Advocates said at the time that the Trump's Corps of Engineer uh, changed their minds, said it was suspicious that the agency would change its mind about damage that had already been documented in the Big Cypress. There you go, guys. Uh, anybody who uh, doesn't understand how the game uh, is played. Uh, yes, 
Gaming the System, I think this is called. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up and figure out uh, what I'm doing on this rainy Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. My guys.